All right. So I want to start off with um, having you imagine in this being a touch screen, so basically like a TV screen where you would walk up and touch. And the first thing I would like you to do is to imagine you would move the screen object from the top left corner down to the right, and it would look something like this. And so I guess it was pretty easy to imagine like how we would do such a thing. And the next thing I would like you to delete this object. So imagine how you would do a touch gesture for doing that. And in this example, I would want you to change the color from green to red. So imagining doing this touch gesture. Maybe that wasn't as simple, and maybe most of you did different gestures. So this was basically how we did our user study in our presentation. Uh, and I'm actually Jonas, that's my name. Um, so this was part of our thesis work that we did, and we call it the fine gestural interaction on large virtual touch screens. And this study was both done in Turkey and in Sweden, which you will see in a way. Um, but the background to this, why we started this, was uh, we have a company in Sweden that called Yolene that does like a lean digital visualization tool that's used in contexts like these where you have like meetings and collaborating around this screen. Uh, so basically what you do is like move digital post-it notes and with this uh, project we wanted to like improve the interaction of this based on, on touch gestures. And so we looked into previous research and we divided that into two uh, main categories. Like some people looked at large touch screen gestures in general, we will sample in a few minutes, and a dissertation study done by Warbrook, which is basically a user-centered approach. Uh, where you ask users how you would define the gestures yourself. Uh, so for large touchscreen gestures, um, many look like how to improve drag and drop operations and every like variations from screen sizes that are like TV screens up to wall sizes of several meters. Um, and also like in collaboration. And uh, in the dissertation studies, there are like many, many different uh, areas where like some people look at TV controls or watch gestures and robot gestures and such. Um, and this in this area is sort of where we place our work as well, uh, looking but looking at the vertical screen. So what we uh, sort of like how we state the problem is basically like when you're doing gestures on a phone and going up to a tablet and going up to a TV screen, there's a lot of things that changes. For instance, you, like depending on the screen size, you will have to start to stretch and you will have to walk around and all of that becomes part of the gesture. So we, we wanted to see how people did that because a lot, as I pointed out, a lot of studies already exist, but most of them are uh, like um, researcher coming up with an idea and trying to evaluate that idea. Um, rather than having users do their own gestures and coming up with that. So we wanted to see that. Uh, so our aim was basically to answer this question. Like what hand gestures would people apply on large touch screens for executing a set of common actions? Um, and our contribu contribution of this uh, was, will basically be a user-defined set of gestures and a taxonomy of these gestures uh, together with agreement rate for each of these uh, actions and also together with the design implications for, for future designers. So this is the, how the poster looked like, how we, when we collected the user for our user study. Um, and this is how we set it up. So basically we had this big touch screen, uh, which wasn't touch, so we control it with a whistle of approach. Um, and we had two cameras on each side filming the gestures. And so we had the participants standing here, watching the gestures also, as you saw in the beginning, and walking up to the screen and performing these actions. And so as I said, we, uh, we recorded this to analyze the, the gestures and we followed the written script and each session took about 30 to 45 minutes. And, and we started like introducing the, the test and asking them basic questions. And basically then we just repeated the animation and then had them do their uh, gestures and then we asked them some questions and they would rate how hard it was to come up with, and then we did, did repeat that for all those uh, actions that we defined. Uh, so in total we had like 26 participants, um, mostly right-handed people, and most of them was 
from Turkey as we did our study in Turkey. And uh, highlighted here are the three districts you saw in the beginning, but we also had such uh, actions as creating an object and copy and open up a menu. So with 12 gestures in total and 26 participants, it gave us 312 gestures to analyze. And so we analyzed this by grouping these gestures that people did uh, together, and uh, by doing that, we were able to calculate the agreement rate and the taxonomy. And after that, we looked at like the correlations between them also, and also tried to look in the cultural thing and and also some demographic of course, like to see if we could get anything in, any interesting information from that. Um, so I just quickly show you the equation for calculating the agreement rate. Um, nothing too fancy, it just gives us a number between one and a zero. Like if, if we give a one, everyone did the same gesture, and if we give a zero, no one did the same gesture. So uh, we would sort of see like which one was easy to come up with and which one not. And here is the taxonomy, is also based from, taken from previous work, the, the initial uh, electrification study work. Uh, which is basically grouping categories of these gestures in different ways. So how you would move your hand or how you would, uh, um, if the, the action is long or if it's just a tap or something like that. Um, so I will present the results for this. And um, here is how the agreement rate looks like. So the move action was the one that was highest rated. So people did most the same gesture in, in that action. Um, and sort of moving down, you get sort of harder and harder, and like people did different, different gestures. So, uh, there's also a way of interpreting this. So there's like from very high agreement to low agreement. So like undo and opening a menu is like very low agreement. People did a lot of different gestures. For that. Uh, and here is the result of the taxonomy. And there's a lot of data here, um, but the interesting thing to point out, I think, is uh, in the flow uh, category here, uh, most of the, uh, the actions were discrete, meaning also that they were like instant act uh, actions, like uh, tapping or flick, rather than move, which is like a continuous movement that takes place over time. And also in the binding, um, most of these were object-centric. Maybe it's really hard to read, but meaning also that the uh, actions or gesture was focused on the object itself rather than around the object or something like that. So here is the gestures that we put together based on this result. Um, some examples that move would be like this drag and drop movement. Uh, marking as complete would be like drawing a shift mark on the object itself. And yeah, another example is changing color most people did that they slide to like change the color on that. Um, so we went back to Sweden and did a pilot study to investigate like these results of it. Uh, so here is back uh, at the company in this um, um, program that they use. Um, and we had condition B, which, which is their, their standard version at the time, um, mostly doing all these uh, actions that we replace by a manual alternative. And in condition A, we replace them with doing the gestures that we propose. Um, and we analyze this using an auto TLX. And uh, here is the graph from that. We had 20 participants, most of them Swedish this time. Uh, so how we would interpret it, this graph is basically if blue bar is lower than red, then we are happy. And uh, we were in most cases except one, uh, which is the mental model thing, or the mental demand, um, so which we could like um, analyze as um, in the other one, people had to only remember how to open the menu and doing the same gestures or the same actions there, rather than having just uh, an individual gesture for each, which they had to remember. Um, so just to point out some things from the discussion about the process, um, like how people did these gestures, really it's up to how you design this, uh, or the prototype that we used that you saw in the beginning, like where would you place an object, 
uh, how should it look, how is the animation, a lot of stuff like that. Of course, we'll like, uh, yeah, we, it will inflict how people did the gesture in some way, and we can always we can't like, cover all of them. So, considering how to do that in the future should definitely be a problem. Um, and we saw that select was uh, quite often used as part of an action in some in some cases, um, where they would like select an object first and then do sort of a gesture. So maybe you could use select as an action itself. Um, and uh, you can also discuss the thing about uh, like forcing people to do one gesture with one hand and one with two hands. Uh, but we chose to uh, let people choose themselves, uh, which is basically what we wanted to see how people did it naturally. Um, and so here's our design implications. And what we saw was basically the nature and binding category in the taxonomy correlated to high agreement rates, which basically what we're saying is that you should design gestures that are um, related, so like that people have a mental model about that they, it's like object centric around the, like the, how you would do in a physical way. And you should also consider designing um, like gestures based on how people use uh, sort of similar applications in the same field, what would you say? Uh, so if your application is similar to something else, you should like really look into how gestures are in that area. And uh, one uh, tricky problem could also be like that some gestures would interfere. Like for example, how would you uh, distinguish between a move and moving an object down and then up, and marking one as complete, which is drawing a shape. So yeah, you have to really, really like really considering how you would design such a thing, and that's of course is uh, gonna depend on the application you're designing for itself. So it's really up to each uh, context. Um, and for uh, actions such as they are, uh, the actions that have low agreement rate, uh, we really suggest that you also have an alternative, sort of like a manual alternative, so there's a, like an easy way to find those things that are hard to remember how to do. Um, and future work, there are of course a lot of things here because there's much things to do and it's really interesting. Um, but as I said, I mean, how, um, like, people might come up with different uh, gestures if you ask them to do more and think longer and stuff. So that could also always be a thing to look into. Uh, like, asking people to do more than one gesture for each action might give some uh, other results than we have. Um, also, including other actions, of course, um, more than R12. Uh, could also be, of course, uh, really interesting to see. Um, and testing with larger screens as well. Uh, you would always find like different results from, depending on how big the people are and how big the screens are, you would sort of do different gestures. Of course, depending on, you wouldn't move an object five, six meters, maybe. You would sort of think of something else. Um, and we briefly touched on legacy bias and cultural differences in some paper. Um, and that should be investigated further because we didn't really take any interesting results from uh, that data we had. Um, yeah, and also, as I mentioned again earlier, like, should you place an object top left? And how would that affect? right-handed people, and uh, yeah, if it's a different color, if the animation is different, how would that, like, would that give another result? And, um, like, always new technology comes in, and these touch screens are still years behind uh, the technology we see in phones these days, uh, but I guess 3D touch and other new technologies will come along in this uh, larger screens some day as well, so that would also probably affect how these gestures would be. 
so I would uh, like to end with a quote from Safar that is uh, that we entered an era of interaction just years. The next several years will be seminal years for interaction designers and engineers who will create the next generation of interaction design inputs, possibly defining them for decades to come. We have an opportunity that comes along only one, once in a generation, and we should seize it. And with this project, uh, I believe that we have seized it. Too. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you for interesting presentation. Okay, any question from the audience, please raise your hand or come to here. No questions? Okay, I have one question. Uh, you mainly uh, talked about the simple gestures, but uh, there are some gestures like uh, like uh, the move down, the move left, or uh, with separately, mm -hmm. or any other gestures with uh, not only one hand, but also the uh, one finger, but also one hand. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did you uh, check such a kind of uh, gestures, or uh, do you have any plans to uh, check such a kind of gestures? Yeah, well, the gestures came from the user itself. Right? So we only showed the animation. And yeah, we saw a lot of different, um, very different. <laughs> like people were almost punching the, the screen sometimes, uh, having re really different ideas of how you should actually move. And so we saw a lot of, uh, a lot of like, those things. Okay, any other questions? No? I uh, have more times. <laughs> Uh, because of the, this session is a, a little bit delayed, so thank you for <laughs> the yeah, presentation. Okay, I'll let you introduce yourself.